everybody, welcome back to the Evermore YouTube channel. It's Chris back with another rant, thought of the day, whatever you want to call it. Um, anything Newcastle United related that's rattled my cage. Uh, I'm going to jump on and do a little bit of a quick reaction video for you. I'm going to get stuck right into this. Um, so if you haven't seen this already, it's uh, quite possibly one of the, the laziest, clickbaity, gutter trash piece of journalism I think I've ever seen or have seen for quite some time. And it comes courtesy of um, Andy Dunn in the, the Daily Mirror or the Mirror, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's vastly becoming like the Sun newspaper these days. So Dunn has decided to put a headline out there um, invoking the, the the name of Sir Bobby Robson in such a disrespectful way. Um, a bit like one of them shit adverts when they've got Albert Einstein trying to sell electricity or something like that. You know, even when you're dead, you're not safe from these hacks and their, uh, their desperate need to try and get views and clicks to their website. So his headline says, Amanda Staveley, wait for this, betrayed Sir Bobby Robson with Newcastle plans showing no regard for the fans. So we're going to unpack this a little bit in a second there, but but me and Mark were talking about this via WhatsApp. And do you know what? Mark made a great point. What in the fuck does Andy Dunn know about what Sir Bobby Robson th thinks or thought or wanted for this club or for this fan base? He throws out that beautiful quote, by Sir Bobby Robson, and what is a club anyway? You know, I don't, I don't need to recite it all. You Newcastle fans are watching this, most of you anyway, and you know all about it. You know, he talks about the noise, the passion, the bricks, the mortar, and everything else. So Dunn decides to quote this um, in a in a way to denigrate Amanda Staveley. Now, now basically, Amanda Staveley was talking at, at a business summit, and she was she was referencing about the club, you know, and and, and the business model, you know, maybe acquiring other football clubs and and you know, increasing commercialism and all this other kind of a stuff. And Dunn's took it upon himself. Dunn, by the way, who I'm pretty sure is a, is a, is a store, store Walt or die in the world Liverpool fan. I've seen him on there. Uh, we usually on the Sunday supplement all the time. And he's a massive red. Uh, and it's pretty clear that he's a rattled red, um, much like the rest of the greedy six who want Newcastle United to fail and want this project to fail. So just, just unpacking a little bit about, about what he said here. So obviously he's talking about what Amanda Staveley had said um, talking about Newcastle United as a brand. Now, now this is football in 2023, okay? So football, unfortunately, is more business than it is sport. Now, you can like that or you can hate that, right? But that is the matter of fact that clubs are like businesses and they're like they're like stock exchange, you know, there's, there's fucking stocks and shares in them. You know, people talk about commercial benefits of this and that and every other thing. And people do reference football clubs, even players are brands, for fuck's sake. Ronaldo's a brand, Pogba was a brand, not kind of brand I would like, mind you, but he's still a brand. Because uh, I thought it was overrated, is, is the question. Uh, we'll answer that question. But, you know, you can't denigrate a man stably for using terminology like this at a fucking business summit, you stupid scouse wank. Like, what a lazy bit of journalism this is, honestly. You might as well have took a shit and smeared it on the paper and put that into the mirror, because this is utterly atrocious, and, and, and his publishers should know better. I mean, but he goes on and he, and he talks about quite what Bobby Robson would have made of Amanda Stavely referencing the football club as a brand. Who knows? Well, actually, if you remember, Kevin Keegan was at Newcastle United when they, they made it a public company and allowed people to buy shares. So this was happening way before Sir Bobby Robson even came to the club, you dozy scouse prick. So maybe do a little bit of your history on that. So... He goes on, obviously, and, and he's talking about Newcastle United like he knows anything about us. I mean, fuck right off, Don. What the fuck do you know about us whatsoever? You just want us to stay down there so Liverpool can stay up here. But he turns around and he says, um, you know, if ever there was a standalone club, surely it's Sir Bobby Robson's Newcastle United. Again, clickbait, 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 right? And he says, by its nature, by its fan base, by its geographical position, at the summit of a great city, it stands alone. But Staveley, this is the best bit, intoxicated by bringing the Saudis to the Premier League and the decent form of her football team cannot help herself. So there's a little tint of low-key misogyny in there as well done, by the way. So you should go look in the mirror and look at yourself, you fucking bellend. So you and Alexis Simon Jordan all this, your cages are rattled by a successful woman here in business, in football, doing something. There's a very minute number of women in football who are doing anything successful, and you clearly have a problem with that, mate. So I think you should take your little small scouse dick and go back and have a cry wank in the corner and stop being misogynistic. That's exactly what you're being right there. And the word intoxicated by bringing the Saudis to the Premier League, do me a favour. You know, Sheikh Mansour was here years before the Saudis rocked up. You know, you were wanting your team to be bought by, by the royal family of Qatar a few weeks back, wanting FSG out. 
So piss right off. Double standards yet again. These journalists, man, get a grip. It's no wonder the decent ones fuck off and write for the athletic. So again, looking at this again, again, he's just, he's just so disrespectful. Newcastle have won a few games in the Premier League. No, actually, mate, we won, we won more games than you did at Liverpool and we were higher than your team. Yes, you're coming past us now, but we were sitting third and fourth in the league. So there you go, mate. And he says, got to the Carabao Cup final and all of a sudden it's about the brand and multi-club and growth. Here's an idea. Before you can run with the commercial giants of football world, he's obviously referencing his old club there, impartiality at its best, learn how to walk on the treadmill um, of winning and regularly contending for major trophies. Now, again, it's so belittling to Newcastle United. It really is. You know, she's obviously been invited to Manchester Stavely at this business, so we'll talk about it. You know, the successful you know, um, procurement of Newcastle United and what they're doing with it, the project, the blueprint, everything else. But oh no, here comes Scousy boy, Andy Dunn, to run us down or run Amanda Stavely down. And this is the best piece. This is what Manchester City have done, to be fair, right? Now, years ago, you go back and get some, clip it up on Sky Retro or whatever, right? This prick would have been the first person laughing at Manchester City when Sheikh Mansur bought them. The first person to say they'll fall on the arsenal, they'll not do anything, not do anything. As all of the journalists did, Simon Jones and all these other stupid hack journalists, right? And then fast forward a few years later, they're hanging out the back of the arse of Man City, week in, week out, kissing Pep Guardiola's balls every time he opens his mouth. They, they are such turncoat fickle bastards. You give Newcastle United five years, and these lot will be hanging out the back of Newcastle United, week in, week out, praising whether it's Eddie Howe, whoever the manager may be at that particular point, right, about how wonderful we are and the players we have and everything else. Do you think they even reference the, the you know, the, the, the Sheikh Man ceremony anymore to the shit? All I care about is Manchester City and how wonderful they are and everything else. But he turns around there and he says, I say, this is another bit as well, as he, this is a great bit. He says, Stavely and everyone else in St. James's hierarchy may soon have their hands full as a golf course, as a golf court case, here's evidence that the public investment fund PIF owns the Cass United, is in fact a Saudi state operation. Now, we didn't do a video about this, right? But I'm going to tell you exactly what I think about this. I heard Craig Hope, a respected journalist who I respect, a lot of people respect, doesn't talk shit like Andy Dunn. He turned around and said, it's basically what you do about nothing. It will not go any further, right? People need to get their head around this. The Premier League are all about money. There's been blood money in the Premier League for years, right? All they want is more money, more money, more money, because they're business people, right? They're not going to kick out one of the richest organisations in the world from the Premier League because it'll kick out loads of money. It's the reason they invited them in the first place. The only reason that they didn't do it is because of the piracy situation, uh, which was obviously cost them money from one of the, one of the media partners. They will not kick Saudi and PIF out of the Premier League. So any other fans watching this who've got little pipe dreams about that, forget about it. It's not going to happen, right? They will not do anything about it. The PIF will prove that there's a separation there and everything else, and that will be that. End of subject. There will be no court case about that whatsoever. In my opinion, you can clip this and play it back if I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. It will not happen. I cannot see it happen at all. The fact that people like Craig Hope are saying it's not going to happen for me makes me feel much more comfortable about it. It ain't going to happen, right? All these guys want us to do, just looking at that again there, they're talking about, again, he just references the um, the takeover and everything else as well. He talks about sporting, uh, sporting Dijon, or sorry, Dijon, a French club that, you know, that apparently the, the PIF are interested in buying. And then, he, he again, he references about Newcastle United. All we want is a winning team and uh, we're not interested in the brand. And I'm sure Sir Bobby would, would want the same. So it's so crass, it's so lazy and hack journalism, as I said there. You know, and these people are always going to come for us. I think we said this when a takeover first happened. These people are going to come out of the woodwork and they're going to throw these these lumps of shit in your cash United and hope that it sticks and everything else. But but this is a new low blow, I think, from, from the mainstream media. You know, invoking the, the name of the late great Sir Bobby Robson to, to, to try and, I don't know, you know, belittle Amanda Staveley's purpose and, 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 and reference in the world of football again, to mask you, your low-key misogyny and that as well. It's just utter nonsense, you know. I mean, I've even seen journalists, you know, friends of this channel, you know, retweeting this and just saying, ignore this fucking arsehole. And he is a fucking arsehole, you know, and they're all going to come out. There's going to be way more guys than Andy Dunn that are going to come out and say these kind of stupid articles. But you know what? Again, he's a Liverpool fan. He doesn't want to clash tonight to go above them. We really could have done this season. I don't think we will now because we probably made a bit of a mistake in the in the January window. Again, we are hampered by by FFP, so that's possibly it as well. But yeah, for me, it's a new low, you know, from the media using the name of the, one of the late great gentlemen's knights of the round table of football in Sir Bobby Robson to try and, and sell newspapers and then just go out to just literally 
smear shit all over the paper and just and just think people are going to swallow it. I'd like to think most neutrals as well would read that and just think that's utter bullshit. Um, but again, a lot of fans are greedy sex fans and they want Newcastle United to go away. They don't want Newcastle United to be what they can be, you know, when the, when this project is, is, is finally realised. You know, years ago, Manchester City got away there where there was nowhere near the level of um, the level of kind of um, uh, barriers in the way, so to speak, as there is now for Newcastle. But listen, we'll work like we can work. We'll get where we get to. I don't believe the Premier League will kick the PIF out, and I believe Amanda Stabley will make a success of this ownership. So that's all I've got to say about that stupid Scouse prick, and hopefully you'll do the right thing and just throw that in the bin and delete that and not even click the link like I did just to get this rad video <laughs> going as well. But that's me done for now. So as a, well, if you, if you haven't already and you like this kind of a thing, please click subscribe. Come and join us. It's all free. Uh, Newcastle United, or well, Newcastle United, sorry, the ever more Newcastle United podcasts, beg your pardon. And then you try to make myself a member of the club there. Um, we've got Mondays and Wednesday shows, pop up videos, just like reviews, transfers, and this rant that you've just seen as well. So come and join Evermore. Loads of room for you guys. We're over two and a half thousand subs, and uh, there's loads of room for you here. So let's keep supporting that team of Court United. Let's ignore these wankers and their. Uh, you know, screw Andy Dunn and the rest of the greedy six, and then let's hope Newcastle United throw it in their face, and we'll see them all praising us in five years' time. Catch you later, everybody.